Okay, um, welcome to the next part of the lecture on coordination, alright? We're going to move to the next part of the question which uh, actually asks on how can this nerve, uh, 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 this um, electrical impulse be transmitted, uh, transmitted across a sinus? Now, I'm going to answer this question in conjunction, okay, with uh, the one other question that came in uh, November 2020, alright, which asks how can the nervous impulse be transmitted across a neuromuscular junction? Um, first of all, okay, I can't go ahead, of course, to explain um, the transmission without telling what a synapse is, okay? Now, a synapse is a junction between two neurons, okay, between a neuron and a neuron, or between a neuron and an effector. So, the junction between a neuron and a neuron is called a synapse. And a junction between a neuron and an effector is also called a synapse. Now, between, the junction between the neuron and the skeletal muscle, okay, is a special synapse which is called the neuromuscular junction, okay? So, um, the transmission of nervous impulse across the neuromuscular junction and across normal uh, synapses are going, to be, are going to be similar except for some very few differences, okay? So, they are very, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate it to you with the... Uh, with, a, with some diagrams, okay, and there are very few steps, and the is going to be very perfect, okay, and it's going to help you to understand a lot. Now, what you have, okay, now is the junction, okay, between a new one and a new one, okay, the junction between a new one and a new one. This is my synapse, okay. Or between a new one and an effector. Now, if this is a, this can still be my new one, okay, and this is and this is the membrane, okay, of my muscle. Alright, this is the membrane of my muscle. And this is the membrane of my muscle. So, okay, this junction here is called if this is my skeletal muscle, then I'm going to call this the neuromuscular junction. Then this one I will just call it a normal synapse. Okay, this is a normal synapse between a new one and another new one. Now, one very important thing you, know, you have to know is okay, we have what we call a presynaptic neuron. Okay, the neuron that comes before is called a presynaptic neuron. Okay, this one is a presynaptic neuron. Okay, and uh, the one that comes after is the postsynaptic neuron. Okay, now the very first stage, all right, in the transmission of nervous impulse across a synapse, okay, is the arrival of the impulse. Number one, okay, is the arrival of the impulse. Now, when that our nerve impulse, okay, which we saw in the previous video, how it was generated, okay, um, it, when it arrives at the presynaptic neuron, okay, what happens is that what, it causes the membrane, remember it's an action potential. So it means that there's going to be a change in the potential okay, of the presynaptic neuron. And this change in that now there's a change in voltage okay, across it. And this change in voltage causes what? Causes um, voltage gated sodium uh, passing channels. Voltage gated because it depends on voltage for them to open. That's what we call the voltage gated. So it, uh, the voltage gated sodium channel, uh, calcium channels are going to open. And when they open, okay, calcium 2 plus, okay, they will be in flux. Alright, this is our new uh, pre synaptic neuron. Okay, there will be calcium 2 plus in flux, okay, into the cell. This is stage 2, alright, you can summarize it in 6 stages. So, stage 1 is the arrival of the impulse. Okay, arrival of the impulse causes um, depolarization in the pre synaptic neuron, okay, causing voltage. Gated um, I, uh, calcium ion channels to open, okay, leading to calcium influx. Now, this calcium, uh, the concentration of calcium 2 plus increases within the presynaptic uh, pre neuron. Now, within the presynaptic neuron, we have vesicles, okay, we have vesicles that contain, okay, neurotransmitters. And for your, uh, for, uh, for, for, for the case of your GCE, okay, what you mostly use in advanced level is a cholinergic synapse, meaning a transmission across a, 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 a 
uh, 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 synapse, okay, which uses acetylcholine, okay, we call it a cholinergic synapse. So it uses acetylcholine. So you will not use uh, maybe GABA, maybe we stands for gamma amino butyric acid, or you will not use epinephrine or maybe adrenaline. Okay, what you use at the is a cholinergic synapse that is acetylcholine. Okay, so you are going to have vesicles, okay, which contains neurotransmitter substances. Alright, it contains neurotransmitter substances, and in this case, we are talking about acetylcholine. Okay, we are talking about acetylcholine. So we are HR, these are the vesicles. So there is increased concentration, alright, of calcium 2 plus, okay, as a result of what? The voltage gated calcium channels are open. So since there is increased concentration, it causes these vesicles, okay, to bind to the presynaptic, alright, to bind to the presynaptic membrane, okay, this membrane is called a presynaptic membrane. So it causes these vesicles to bind to the presynaptic membrane, okay, and uh, release their contents, okay, the, the neurotransmitter via the process of exocytosis. So that's step three. Step one was arrival of the input, step two is influx of calcium 2 plus, step three is, okay, the vesicles bind to the presynaptic membrane, okay, fuses with the presynaptic membrane and release their contents into the synaptic cleft. So this space between the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane is called the synaptic cleft. So this the vesicles bind there, okay, release it, uh, release their neurotransmitter uh, content, which in this case is acetylcholine, into the synaptic cleft via the process of exocytosis. Okay. Now the neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic cleft, okay. And binds to receptors. So there is actually receptors, alright, which are there to bind to. Okay? There are actually receptors which are there to help to bind to the neurotransmitter. So the neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic cleft, okay, and binds to this receptor which is found on the postsynaptic membrane. Now, their binding on the postsynaptic membrane is going to cause channels, okay, sodium channels which we call ligand, okay, ligand uh, gated sodium channels, alright, because it depends on what, maybe a ligand like acetylcholine to bind to a receptor and then open up the channels, okay, so you are going to have um, ligand voltage uh, sodium channels which are going to open, alright, and, and we got influx of sodium plus into the postsynaptic neuron, okay, of course there will be influx to the presynaptic membrane, Okay, and you're going to have um, increased concentration of sodium plus here uh, in the postsynaptic membrane. And of course, this increased um, concentration of, post of um, sodium plus causes depolarization, alright, in the postsynaptic neuron, okay, and generates an excitatory postsynaptic potential, alright. So the membrane is going to, the membrane potential is going to change, going to cause, uh, uh, so the influx is going to cause an excitatory postsynaptic potential, okay, which will later on um, sum up or um, generate into an action potential, and then the action potential is going to be generated, is going to be transmitted along across the postsynaptic neuron. Okay, so you see our action potential has left from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron. Okay, but you see what happens is um, our our acetylcholine cannot remain here for long because if it remains here for long, okay, the impulse will continue being fired. Alright, so what happens is that there is an enzyme, okay, just around the receptors, which we call acetylcholinesterase, okay? We call it acetylcholinesterase, okay? It is an enzyme that breaks acetyl, uh, acetylcholine, okay, into um, choline. Okay, and uh, acetate. Into choline and acetate. So, it hydrolyzes, acetylcholine is hydrolyzes the acetylcholine, okay, uh, into choline and acetate. Which now, okay, the choline and the acetate will rediffuse. Either they rediffuse, there are two mechanisms here. Is it that they rediffuse back to the post synaptic, to the pre synaptic membrane, where they will be taken up, okay? To reform back the neurotransmitters and stored in the vesicles, or they are going to be they are going to be discarded. Okay, they are going to be destroyed. The choline and the acid are going to be destroyed and eliminated. Okay, there are two mechanisms. Either they are taken up, okay, and then uh, is either they are taken up to reform back the neurotransmitters and stored in the vesicles for further use, or they are going to be 
um, destroyed, okay, and um, is, um, and excluded. So, stage one, arrival of keywords, stage two, um, opening of voltage um, uh, classificated channels and allowing classing two plus influx. Stage three, English on of classing two plus for sequences to bind to pre synaptic membrane, release that content via in cytosis. Stage four, new transmitter that is across synapse and bind to its receptors. Stage five, you are going to have sodium plus, okay, um, influx, okay, through their legal voltage gated uh, get sodium channels, okay, causing depolarization, alright, so you are going to have depolarization here and there will be transmission of the impulse. And of course, you can ask the six, the acetylcholine esterase, alright, destroys the acetylcholine or hydrolyze the acetylcholine into choline and acetylcholine, which can then redirect it back to the presynaptic membrane, taken up, okay, to be formed by the neurotransmitter or uh, they can be destroyed and then excreted, okay. Now, um, uh, after having seen this process, okay, uh, in the next video, I'm going to explain to you how is the nerve impulse transmitted across a neuromuscular junction. It is going to be similar, it's actually very similar, but there are just some very few differences, okay, when it seems it is um, actually linked to the membrane of the neuron, okay. So, thank you very much. See you in the next video.